This is Coverity 5.2 LDAP Server Configuration Walkthrough. First of all, before you can enable LDAP authentication, you need to configure how are you going to connect to the server. We are in the LDAP Configuration screen under the Administration tab, Server Configuration. And from the top here, let's review the fields. Host name is where your LDAP server is running. This could be a server name or it could be an IP address. It must be reachable both for the purposes of confirming this configuration and also for importing users or authenticating by users. Generally, the default port is 389. There are other ports that might work. 389 is a default. Your IT department would be able to tell you what it is in your case. Domain or base DM. So you could use the domain format, such as Kaveri.com, or you could use the DN format for this, which would look like this, domain component equals Kaverity, comma, domain component equals com. This determines where all the searching starts in the LDAP tree. If your LDAP requires an SSL connection, you would check this. We do not yet support TLS connections. If your LDAP server accepts anonymous binds, you would select this option and then not fill in username and password. If your LDAP server accepts unauthenticated binds, you would fill in the username but not password. In my case, I actually need to provide both um, username and password, which I've just done. And for the other settings, uh, I'm using Active Directory, so I'm just going to pre-fill the default Active Directory settings. And now I'm going to click Connect to LDAP. Test completed successfully. Now I can apply. LDAP is set up. Real quickly, I will review with you the other fields. Use the search settings base. Uh, you could probably leave this blank. There are troubleshooting guides that will tell you when you will need to fill this in at the Knowledge Center. The user search filter, I'll come back to in one second. Username attribute is the field in LDAP that determines where to find what the user types in as their username. In other words, um, say my username is Asya, A-S-Y-A, and in our LDAP server, that is stored as my S-A-M account name, and that is how SIM is going to know that when I type in Asya to log in, it's going to look up the SAM account name attribute in the LDAP server and try to find the matching account. When it finds it, it's going to use the given name attribute as my first name, SN as my last name or surname, and an attribute called mail as my email attribute. These are fairly standard defaults for Active Directory. We have other defaults that you can select for Open LDAP or if you guys use some other LDAP directory server, you would have to look up in its documentation or would the, uh, ask the IT department what fields should be filled in there. Use a search filter. Requires two parts, object class user. So what type of record identifies that that record represents a user rather than a group or a department or an organization or something else? And the second half is always going to be this. This field right here must match this username attribute. And this right here, just fill in zero. What that says is the filter is going to return everybody who's this field matches whatever was typed in as the username when you were logging in. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't actually authenticate the user since I'm not going to be typing my password. I actually have an account there called Acomsky. What it does is actually it connects and it says that, oh, I found a username Acomsky using this filter. So I found an object class of type user and this field was equal to that thing you typed in. Now, group search settings. This one's a little trickier. If there are more than a thousand groups in your LDAP directory, you may need to both adjust the base DN and or the search filter in order to reduce that list down. But let's assume for the moment that you don't have more than a thousand. If you specify that group is the attribute that identifies the type, the object class of type group, 
It has to be both here and here. Here, it tells a search filter that we only want to be searching through things that have object class equals group. This, of course, is the thing that says that that's what identifies groups. Role attribute can also be thought of as group name. So a group name might say engineers, so your role is an engineer, or legal department. That's the thing that is going to be displayed when you're importing groups as the group's name. Member attribute is what is it in this group record that lists all the people that belong to it. Now, for Active Directory, member is going to be a most common configuration schema. And the member will be listed as the full DN, a full distinguished name of the user. There are other types of schema where only the UID or only the username may be used. We'll address that in our troubleshooting guide. Now, if I click Retrieve Groups, it says, hey, we got 99 LDAP groups. One thing that I can do is I can use the search filter to reduce the number of groups that are returned. And the simplest way to do that is to simply have a name match some sort of wildcard. For example, I want to only get all the engineering groups. Notice here that I anded, and, this, and that. I'm going to apply this. Now look at that. I'm down to 12 groups. So there are only 12 groups that had the string ENG somewhere in it. Now I might say, OK, well, I want all the ENG groups, but I also want a group called ORGPS. So I might now add, you got to be careful with parentheses here, that I want name is something ENG or name is ORGPS. Look at that. 13 groups, so the 12 from before, plus one more. What do we need to do now that we've applied this? Well, this reminds us LDAP authentication is currently disabled. So even though we can connect to the LDAP server, people won't be able to authenticate with it. We will now enable LDAP authentication, apply. And there's this other feature here called create users automatically on sign-in. Now, this will not work for users who are not parts of imported groups. The reason for that is SIM won't know to give them any privileges. So they might be able to authenticate, but they won't be able to actually gain access to the system. In the future, that will not be the case. But for now, this will only work for groups that we import. So we're going to look at this. Note we got word PS. And then we've got all the groups that have eng somewhere in them. I'm going to select one of them. So what I'm doing is I'm importing a group. Um, I'm going to give it, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give them project owners. Why not? And notice here, here's a bunch of people listed. It's showing me the username, which is what it mapped SAM account name field to. First name, which was the given name, last name, and email. Now, now I could unselect some of them, but for the moment I'll just you know, import them all. Notice that at any point I can select whether or not I want to refresh the group's membership nightly, whether I want to refresh it right now when I click Save. I could take away privileges. If I look over here on the user's side, notice that because I'm an LDAP user, all my properties are grayed out, as LDAP is the system of record, not SIM. And the membership in ENG SE group is shown, as well as indicating that that's an LDAP group. I could still disable the user, even if I don't have the ability to disable this user on the LDAP side. Generally, you won't need to do that. Uh, somebody leaves the company, their LDAP account will generally be disabled or deleted. Now, just to reiterate, this feature right here means that if somebody gets added on the LDAP server to the NGSC group, I don't have to resynchronize that group. As soon as they authenticate, SIM will check to see if they're in any groups that have been imported. And when they, it sees that they're in NGSC group, they will automatically get added to that group and gain access to the system.